All right, we're live. Okay, Jesse. It's a February 7th oh, phone call. Repeat all that. <laughs> Seventh dial call. In attendance, we have Jesse, Rochelle, DJ, and guest author and dial member Bree. <laughs> guest author, night. Not yet for her back, but. <laughs> So yeah, we, I, we started talking about uh, the recent current events, getting Brie caught up here um, a little bit. So that briefly started right before this recording. So we will continue on with that. Yeah, let's uh, uh, definitely good to, to catch up. Just uh, before we start, I just have to uh, note that I have to leave at 5.30 my time, which is in, in like... 22 uh, minutes for another point. So well, let's I don't have to, uh, to. But like, let's start with a quick catch up, I guess. Like we, we just before the call, we're already going over the the hot topics, uh, what's currently happening. Um, V2 is still the most important focus. So we're all committed to getting that out as soon as possible. And that's where all our efforts currently are going. Um, I've been looking at getting a few good launching parties to um, to partner with on, on the launch of V2. So basically to create a couple of data sets for a few real companies that need them um, on the launching point. So we will have like a lot of actual useful tasks, um, which is now currently one of the major, like we need to do a lot of testing and we need to make sure um, that the tasks uh, that we have enough tasks going uh, at, at the start. So these are two of the core focus points for V2 right now. Um, other one is documentation. So um, so we're gonna make it more easy for anyone to to use and, and launch tasks. Um, then I was talking a little bit about, because Bree asked uh, about like expanding the team, um, I think. so. Mm -hmm. On that end, we are, like we said in the last call, we're looking to uh, hire two more devs as we're, we're currently not, not uh, uh, we're a bit undermanned in the development side. Um, Lawrence has been coming back slowly, but he hasn't uh, been able to commit too many hours yet, which is, which is slowly increasing. Um, David, of course, is, is traveling. So um, I did speak with him a little bit last week, but it's not certain yet when he'll be back. He's, he's sort of roaming the world and uh he will settle down at some point in some country and then hopefully he will be uh eager to start back to uh, to get back to work uh which looks like it but we don't have a date for that yet so that's why oh. we're currently hiring more people and there's one developer um that will be starting soon um I actually onboarded him this week and uh, yeah so that's all looking good it took a little bit longer uh for him to find the hours but um he will be pushing some commits. He's already been looking at the code and uh, he's excited to start. So that will be uh, a great help setting up campaigns and filling the, the V2 data and also doing uh, some of the testing that needs to be done. So there's there's quite a lot of code and features that need to be thoroughly tested. Um, yeah, we're also looking to add another another developer. Actually, we had some I had a few chats with with Miguel. He's a DAO member, and he's also excited to contribute a bit of hours on the, on development side. So I'm hoping we can can work that out. Actually, still have to follow up with him, um, but I know he's uh, he's very much committed to to effect and and yeah. uh, currently has some extra time to to contribute. So I hope we can get him as a part time developer as well uh, on front end and just basically all over the stack. Um, so we're progressing there. That's great news because because it's it's really needed to, to to gain some more momentum. Yeah. Um, to finish the the update, uh, Bri, you mentioned the Solana uh, mm -hmm. uh, like potential bridge. Um, for now, it's just a rumor. Like we're we're discussing it. Uh, I think the first time we discussed it was two weeks ago on the DAO call. But it's something I've been quite, yeah feeling quite warm towards. Uh, I think the ecosystem there is is really strong, and also when it comes to our token health and potential listings on exchanges, uh, it could be kind of a requirement to expand to a more active ecosystem. So um, it's something. Yeah, I think. 
Go ahead. Yeah, I think the more the more ecosystems that effect is or effect network is accessible through, that that can only be a good thing. But I understand you want to stay on EOS, and I think that's a good idea because that tech is really suitable for this. And yeah, EOS is doing I, a lot of work to push their product too, like that community. Exactly right. And when it comes to products, we're really committed to well, like committed. We're really happy with EOS, and uh, we've been building a lot of technology on it. Like Feed Two is built on it, which has been a lot of work, and it's completely based on uh, on EOS. So for the product, it's just it's just it will be in in like I think in every sense better to be on on EOS for now. Um, but when you look at like ecosystem partnerships and the, the health of the token, including uh, listings by by you know other exchanges and stuff, um, yeah, that's also a really important part of the project. And that let's see, is currently really hard to do in this in this ecosystem. So I think that's where. Oh, we lost him for a bit. Jesse, I think you're talking, and I don't hear you. Or is that mine? Mine that's cut out. No, I don't hear him either. Okay. Well, long story short, the more access we have to other blockchains, the better. But the easier, it's got to be really easy for the user. I don't know, sometimes bridges are like two steps too many. So if that could just be like a one-click step, that'd be cool. <laughs> so, Rochelle, what's going on in your end? Oh, my gosh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Jeez, right when Jesse's disconnected, my earbuds my galaxy earbuds like randomly disconnected too <laughs> i was like somebody's doing something on our network um jesse will be back here in a second he his whole device just yeah so what what charge. have you been working on rochelle um all as much of the documentation and marketing stuff as i can uh without like specific you know, waiting for mm -hmm. waiting for the tech guys, you know, to to um, you know get their stuff ready because a lot of it, you know, of what I do depends on um, how they have it designed and fixed and published and, and built. So I've been, you know, creating all this content and stuff, and just writing like how I imagine it, you know, to be, and then just having like those sections highlighted that, you know, where it's like nothing concrete yet. Um, yeah. As far as like my details. So I know, you know, when it's done, okay, go back, rewrite that little snippet, this little snippet and stuff, and just constantly building out, you know, the, the marketing stuff with like the lead up to the launch during the launch after the launch, you know, cause there's, there's going to be different audiences for it. You know, there's going to be the worker audience, the um, uh, data scientists, you know, the, the, the are what I would say are customers, you know, who are going to use the V2 to put on tasks and things. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's going to be a, a partner audience, you know, like ecosystem and, you know, the people that we're going to be partnering with this, you know, different, different things with that. So it's like a spider web that covers it all. And there's, there's stuff in with it. And then, of course, there's going to be communication, you know, uh, to the DAO and uh, to the existing community. It's There's so many audiences <laughs> that all this stuff is planned out on. And then it also has to kind of, like, match up. It's it's a mess. I have so many files and, and things and boards and, and yeah, but my, my really... whiteboard in my office is getting overused. I can tell you that. <laughs> Yeah, so I I feel like, like I'm on the marketing committee that 
there's not a lot to do until these developers are like, okay, we're done. It's live action. Okay, we're going to have a launch party. And that's when we can get into action. It's yeah. prepping for that launch party. Yep. It's, it's all the prep work for all of that. And then I'm designing, you know, for this stuff for like the Dow marketing committee to see, you know, before the stuff is going on. So you guys, you know, are, are in the know and we already have stuff going on for that too, that, you know, you guys can all help add to and, you yeah. know, being on. So it's a lot. It is. So a I, lot. I think we should work together um, a little more well, maybe even sooner rather than later, um, and start compiling all that that work and all the data and the history, and create like a a little book. That we can do that and create a book to go with the launch. Yeah, yeah, that would be done. But some of some of the stuff to feed into the Dow Marketing Committee, I I don't I don't have it shareable yet. You know. Because right. there's different levels of access. So as soon as I do, the earlier the better in my book. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we can talk separately about that later. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's got to fit in with, with our real life stuff too, you and I, the stuff we deal with. So. Yeah. Well, that's it. My whole goal now is all about publishing. I've, I've completely, I don't want to go back into the school system. It, it, it causes me so much anxiety just even thinking about going back into a school. They're, they're so bad now. Um, I've decided I'm, I've switched over to publishing. <laughs> so that's that. So that's one book I would like to do, get published. And I don't know, you could be the author. I could do all the other parts. Or we could author and edit together. That would be good. That would be good. I'm, I would love. I would love to see like ebooks and stuff about you know our yeah. platform and and you know resources and stuff. I think that would be amazing. Yeah, I think we should go for it. But it would be nice to have that um, all final checked and ready to go. And have some print copies when you do your launch party, right? So you've, you've got that. I mean, we can always do an update later to add to it. Oh, that'd be cool. Sweet. Yeah. Um, oh, we've got the chat open. I see Alan is in the audience. Oh, there's a chat. <laughs> yes, there's a Hi, chat. Hi, Alan. Um... What else? We've got the one thing that I put on the agenda this morning. Um, does anybody else have anything that we want to talk about? Yes, I had a question for Jesse when yes. he's ready to talk. Oh. Where'd he go? There he is. He keeps popping in and out. He's I back. I think he's trying. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry, guys. I had some trouble with Discord. And my phone died, and then I couldn't get back in. But you can hear me, right? Yeah, we hear you. Now. Yes. All right, perfect. Sorry about it. All right, Alex. Go ahead now. All right, so... Um... The question I had is, uh, n now that um, the farms are ended, ha did you ever look into or finish uh, figuring out how to uh, proceed with Defy Box uh, for the farm? No, I haven't. Um, like, I I have to refresh my memory, but we we were talking about with them about doing something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, like I think yeah, or rather like uh, because the 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 DAO staked earned uh, like the EFX right and the box rewards and 
the the multi-sig account needed to claim it and I think there are like issues figuring out how to get it to claim exactly. Yeah, so I'm having issues using their UI uh, without the, the anchor wallet. Like they, they, have, they only support a few wallets and it's not really useful with anything like a multi-sig or, and it's not like open source or anything or there's no documentation. So I'm, I'm struggling a bit with DeFi box. Um, I'm not so happy uh, with DeFi box. Um, but I think maybe for doing a farm, it shouldn't be too, like we may be able to do that already. Like I do think we have, the liquidity is very low right now. So I would like to see how we can increase, uh, and the farm would be a great way. Uh, also if it, if it's DAO sponsored, I think it would be a nice, uh, a nice way, but when it comes to the, the. The EFI box, I think we should, yeah, we should really increase the liquidity there. So also from the foundation side to increase, uh, see if they increase it and, and to yeah, the foundation maybe get incentives going for LPs. Topping off the DeFi box would be good. Uh, Cause I think uh, generally the idea yeah, was we want to, like I think in the earlier conversation, talking about expanding ecosystems such as to Solana and stuff. Um, really, until we really expand, we're going to be pretty ex obscure, right? Yeah. Because everyone, mo the vast majority of crypto people are like outside of EOS and and there's definitely incentive for the workers to create an EOS account, right? Because to them, the incentive is they can, if they make an account, they can start working and, you know, earn EFX. So I'm not too worried about attracting workers, but uh, with requesters and also just people interested in the token, they don't really have that uh, great a way to access. And the pancake swap pool is also kind of not that great. Uh, and there's other like uh, as we call them ecosystems out there so it'd be good to figure it out uh, like a way to kind of expand it the, the only thing I can think of is that EOS has their EOS EVM right and I remember there being a, yeah. a bridge where you could like they were working on like they had an application um, I think I sent it to you uh, that uh, for for for, for uh, tokens to be swappable between EOS and EOS EVM. And also, I know that there are other bridges that work with EOS EVM. Uh, so I wonder if that would make it easier to like make a deal with a bridge provider to kind of expand uh, uh, the ecosystems EFX can be part of. Yeah, maybe it gets a bit more complicated, I guess. I happen if there's a good bridge that supports EOS EVM, um, that would that would really help. Cause but I, honestly, I haven't found one yet. Because I know EOS EVM, like they had a really big initiative to get bridges for EOS EVM between Ethereum and I think Solana too, like all the big ones. Um, so it wouldn't be like, because really it's all just about of getting the steps to do something like with EFX on EOS as it is, no one wants to create like new tech, right? like dedicated bridge between EOS and Solana, yeah. right? But uh, if we can get the bridge over to EOS EVM and then EOS itself like funds initiatives for bridges to EOS EVM with a two-step, we can get to Solana. So like from EOS to EOS EVM and then EOS EVM to Solana. Like that's the only, like I think a uh, reasonable way I can see it being done without, you know, creating some dedicated infrastructure. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't. I haven't found any bridge that uh, supports EOS EVM yet. But I'm I'm just looking now. I feel like there has to be. There's maybe one out there. Because I I remember it being like a really big initiative of theirs, but I also haven't been checking it the EOS news lately. Those bridges are kind of yeah. They're they're always hard to get right, and the they're. They always get hacked and stuff. So there, there's a few ones that you would trust, I guess. 
because bridges have a lot of power because they can basically like print tokens. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, One idea that I had for bridging potentially was to bridge from EOS to to Solana using technology by like that's used for IBC. But it, I I think the the limitation we have there is that it could only work one way. So from from EOS to Solana, and it wouldn't work the other way around. Um, that, that, that would so be good, it's not ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Another way might be to find a good sort of uh, like a decent sort of a centralized exchange that supports both chains to to accept like to bridge it in that way. But it's that also has a lot of downsides, like being reliant on that entity. They would have a lot of power. Yeah, but I think there's no real avoiding it if we want to expand ecosystems. Yeah, I'm looking, but I cannot find any, like you would have to go, I don't think there's even an Ethereum EOS EVM bridge. Yeah, I'm not able to find many. I'll just, I'll ask around within EOS, the EOS community, like the most of people working on this, because being on the EVM makes it way easier to operate a bridge. I guess from EOS EVM to anywhere. So maybe there's an, a, a provider that, that does support it or is building it out. Especially if you heard about it, then it must be somewhere happening. Because that will be the best. If bridging is easy and it works, then, then it would be oh, quite I... easy to go. Well, yeah, when you talk about it, like I read the older articles and they had, I think it was multi-chain and that also had like some sort of uh, problem. Multi-chain, right? Yeah, I saw something like that, multi-chain, cross-chain router. But then like, um, it, like there was like some sort of hack or something in August. So maybe last August. Yeah, it's kind of that if you go to their website, you get like a huge virus, like a deceptive site or anything. Oh, I always get that for XYZ domains. Oh, really? I have it also for their .org. I don't know. Maybe, maybe someone's trying to do some phishing. Hard to say. <laughs> I think so. Okay, new website. Oh yeah, I think it's like it's really just like being on EOS problem because our text that EOS tech stack is just too unique that no one wants to and too obscure that no one wants to make you know bridges and the one people that did I don't know maybe we should just maybe it wouldn't be as hard for. Um, what was the guys that did our bridges already? What was your name? P tokens, like P network. I mean, P they network. they made a bridge from EOS to Ethereum. Like we have like EFX on Ethereum with their P tokens. So, and but they did have the big fee. But if the if the goal is to provide like I guess an option for traders, I don't think the like. The fee is a big deal to the workers, right? But to traders, it's yeah. much less so a big deal. So maybe it'll be better just to talk to them and see if there's like a way to get a bridge. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Like, I feel like uh, I remember that foundation uh, w after the delisting, the, there was a talk about like either improving the LP somewhere or getting another exchange. 
yeah, I think we we need to do something for all this talk about expanding ecosystems. Yeah, right. it's it like I think we need to do something as well with with regards to making the token accessible somewhere. Um, like I, I'm for to increase. Like I think we should increase the liquidity in in DeFi box. I don't think it will it will change much um, because people don't really. Yeah, there's just not much happening there. So in, I think with looking at bridging is, is, is actually, yeah, just quite a good idea. B network, unfortunately doesn't pop for Solana and I doubt they if don't. they're really actively building new. Yeah. I, uh, well, part of the reason they increased the fees is cause uh, they were having financial difficulties. So, uh, I doubt they expanded if they yeah. don't have any Solana nodes. Well, even Solana itself is kind of iffy. Sometimes it just like breaks. They had an outage, I heard, like, yesterday or something, or? Yeah, like a few days ago. Yeah. Anyway, did you have some meeting to get to? It's... Yeah, I'll stick around for a little bit okay. longer. Because I don't want to. I'll just delay, later delay everything a bit, because I was out. <laughs> I, it, like, maybe, is was there something on the agenda to discuss, or? I guess not, right? I Missed this part, maybe. Just had the. Uh, There's no proposals. EOS report on there. That was it. Alan just made a comment. Did you catch that? There is no call for EFX at the moment, so it's not an issue at the moment. But the point being is hopefully it will become an issue. I guess. <laughs> Because there will be a call for EFX. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it, I think it goes a bit hand in hand. So, it, uh, like, if we have a great product, then that, that should drive already a, a call for EFX. But as long as it's, yeah, when, when it's not easy to access it, then it will become very, that will become a big, burden like a big big barrier for entry mm -hmm. which is bad on the product side um but also when it comes to community and liquidity and attracting traders and getting a more lively ecosystem that's that's also really hard to do now i think in the end it's really going to boil down to how easy is it for your average person to access and do what needs done and I think your average person doesn't really care about blockchains and what it's on. They just want to go into the product, do what they need to do, and move on. And then you've got the developer side, where the more avenues, the more developers have options with. I think we just need some sort of bridge to Solana, because it seems all the cool AI stuff is happening on Solana. I think so. That would... That'd be awesome. There's so much work into it, though. Is my mic working? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just processing what's being said. I wouldn't make a good radio host. Too many pauses. But yeah, Solana is a good topic. So, so to I think that's that's we should, if we can figure out how to migrate or like do a bi-directional bridge, then it, that would be a something to consider, like like to weigh out the pros and cons, because it means we need to make liquidity in a in some place. But I think the potential is is quite ups, potential upside would be pretty pretty amazing uh, there. Uh, of course, you can also look at other ecosystems but this one seems to make the most sense but if there is not a bridge then that that makes things more difficult so um we would have to weigh in way more the effort to build a bridge um or make like a bridging solution or like that that effort would come 
to weigh on us, which which definitely is going to take more time. What about looking at like, are there not blockchains out there that that um, are themselves designed to be inter blockchain? <laughs> like, oh, what am I thinking of? I'm sure you read something about a first layer blockchain that was you mean like polka what part of their oh is that what maybe what i'm thinking of well where it's usually they all so if you just break to that one and then from there to other forks of themselves but like eos is like a unique one mm. what's the urgency of having this EFX being accessible at the moment um because nobody wants to buy efx at the moment so nothing's happening with the price. So we don't really need it to be accessible. The only time we need it to be accessible is when we've got a product and when we're trying to attract people to the project. It's a little bit of which came first, the chicken or the egg. Right? Oh, no, I agree when you've got people... that we need V2 out first. It's more like just the long term. Yeah. If the if you want to tap into the, or rather, once we uh, once V two has effect delivering good result, like like I would agree with you if like if we still had KuCoin, but like with KuCoin arbitrary delisting us, it's now like EFX is really obscure. Like if we don't have a bridge, we need a centralized exchange. Like because it's otherwise it's going to be just completely obscure we could have the best tech ever but it, yeah we need these we need these things once we we're, we're up and running well i mean that's what i'm we're saying we're not up and running i'm thinking way. like if yeah. this thing like if for example a centralized exchange that probably will take months right just you know back and forth talking right so it'll be nice to have that like on the on the pipeline while v2 is still being completed because the way things are at the moment the price of vfx is where it is and because of the inaccessibility to it I can't see it going anywhere up or down at the moment. Yeah, it's not being traded, but I agree. Like what DJ said, I think like both both needs to happen uh, in a relatively like I would say short time frame. We would like to do both, so we need to release the product, but also I think that the accessibility of the token or it being you know attractive to people to to buy and trade and and use will greatly help our ecosystem when it comes to to everything like to to be an attractive project to be part of and to contribute to you need to have like a lively ecosystem like it, it and it like a centralized exchange listing could really help i'm just um my belief is that it's extremely hard to to get a listing that's semi-decent as long as the token is not performing or moving at all, because because centralized exchanges look at this as a primary uh, metric to 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 decide whether or not to to uh, to adopt the token. So getting a lively accessible token like uh, side of the community, where I think is 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 important and. Yeah, it's where we are. Where we are now, it's just kind of hard to visualize because it's not moving. People aren't buying or selling. Like there's not much happening. I think if we increase uh, the liquidity pool size, it's it's not gonna really change much. Um, it will be great if that changes, right? But it's just I think that's that's kind of out of our hands, as it's uh, yeah, the ecosystem just is not that that uh, buzzing right now. There's no real call to increase the liquidity all at the moment, I don't think.
No, that was mentioned, I think, uh, before uh, for a bit, but indeed it's, it's it, it might not be anything extremely important right now. I do have to drop off in, in a little bit. Just wanted to check if there's any topics um, still on the before you go, Jesse, list. Before you go, Jesse, yeah. this is off topic, but I did send you a couple of um, PMs on Discord. I don't know whether you got them or not, or whether you can't get um, PMs on there. I don't like it to look at my um, uh, account on, on blocks. Because it might it appears different to other people's accounts in, in so much as different actions and everything else to get rewards and um, and vote. Oh, I just see your message. Sorry, they slipped by. I'm not keeping a close eye on my Discord DM. So I'll uh, I'll look into it, Alan. I, okay, I remember thanks. we talked about this briefly before. Yeah, no Thank worries. You. All right. Um, I think we covered everything. I think the only other thing to add is um, we still need to pass those, uh, create that uh, ATP. Remember? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good one. I was I was working on a guide for ATPs and then I got a bit distracted. But I have to. Um, I'll make these ATPs uh, right now and then finish the guide. Um, yeah, I have them, so that's I can I can set this up and then we can approve All the right. pending ones. Sounds good. Cool. Then I'm gonna drop off. Thanks, guys. Bye, Jesse. Good to uh, good call and till next time. Bye bye. Bye, Jesse. Okay, I don't have anything else myself to add, so I'm just going to listen or... I think we're done for now. Whatever. I think we covered everything. Okay. Oh, I just I just wanted to remind everyone there was that um, uh, thing I put up on the um, agenda, the EOS report that right. Masari put up, the state of EOS. It was a really good one. So, um, I think I, I posted it in the Effect Telegram channel as well. I just oh, want anything notable you want to everybody mention? look at it. Um, well, one part was kind of concerning me, and it was the uh, network analysis part, where it showed the um. Where'd it go? Where's that the link? The active addresses and the new new addresses. That's what that's what concerned me, because to me it it makes it look like people aren't using it, but I know we use it a lot. Gosh, what is going on with my phone? Apologize. I don't think we use it that much. Maybe one we have tasks. There's no. a lot of use. Yeah. And I, I mean, they had a lot of stuff for like Atomic Assets was using it mm -hmm. a bit, and then or Atomic Hub. But yeah, Upland was using it a lot too. So I mean, it didn't. It didn't seem like this report mentioned like a lot of the different DAPs, you know. And I think they it only mentioned like two D five ones. Uh, like exchanges. I'm not sure. There's, I keep going back to it and looking at different parts here and there, um, since I posted it. But. That's all I wanted to, to pop up.
Yeah, I only skimmed through it, so I'll probably take another look at it later. Then I guess uh, I'm going to cut the recording. Yeah, sounds good.